Hello guys and welcome to another one of my videos. Today I'll show you how to easily water cool your laptop and possibly not void your warranty while doing so. The parts I used for this video are all purchased from eBay and took a long time to arrive. We have a generic 240mm aluminium radiator for only $24. Next up is a generic 12 volt water pump kit for $20. You guessed it, two generic 120mm PC fans for only $7. Two generic barb fittings for $3.50. A generic 30mm CPU water cooling block for only $2.85. And finally, some generic PVC water cooling pipe for only $3.27. Totaling in a whopping $60.62 which is roughly 42.69 USD. Now I did not grab some for this video, but I would highly recommend getting some generic hose clamps. This would help with leakages. Now here it is all laid out on the table, ready for an i5 desktop build for a disposable test. From my initial testing, the water cooling system had a lot of leakages. This was mainly due to the stock hose clamps. They are weak and the issue could also be because the hose is very thick. I had to resort to soaking the hose in hot water. Then using old garden wire, I twisted the pipe tight around the fittings. I would highly recommend getting the hose clamps because this is so makeshift it made me cringe. So enough of the cooling system and let's get into the good stuff. I was replacing my laptop's secondary hard drive when I had an insane idea. I thought, hey, I have this cheap water cooling system kit with a radiator built large enough for two devices and I have noticed the thermo throttling of this laptop. So let's have some fun. So first, let's get a baseline. I ran the benchmarking with stock cooling propped up on some rubber feet. I believe this was the most scientific way of doing this. Recording this entire benchmark would be pretty boring, so I skipped ahead until it had heated up. Basically I noticed 70 to 72 degrees on load. So we got a score of 1175, which I think is a pretty good baseline. Let's flip the laptop over and get the water block on. Off comes the cover, and I think we'll try to put the water block right here in the center of the CPU and GPU. It looks like the heat pipes run over this point. It really does look like this laptop's designed for this. The zip ties seem to fit right under the heat pipe. So let's go with a well-placed zip tie in Arctic Silver. Nope, this is sliding around like crazy. Ah, no more sliding. It feels a bit more solidly attached. 
So at this point, I realized the stiff tubes make maneuvering the laptop over a bit difficult, but not impossible. I am determined. So finally, I got it over, and this is a shot from the tabletop. Whoa, just look at these temps. I think it's already been worth it. Now I have an operational hybrid cooling system. Time to bench. Well, that's awesome. Oh, what? I've lost power. Ah, oh, PSU's dead. Time to grab another one. So now that we're back with another power supply plugged in, uh, let's check the temps. Looks like we're almost at 70 before turning the system back on. Okay, so new power supply is on, let's watch it drop. Okay, so we're sitting at 55 degrees, so I'll start the benchmarking now. Okay, quick update. We have dropped a degree. Looks like we're almost halfway, and I'm pretty happy with this result. I can't wait to see the score. We are now sitting at a score of 1,187. That's a definite performance increase. Not to mention 20 degrees cooler at load. So I think this has been a pretty successful result overall. All you would really need to do is replace the water block with a quick sealed disconnect and you would have all the benefits of portability and be able to overclock when you dock at home. For only $50 to $60 this would be a great upgrade for a laptop. If you liked my video please like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like me to use this water cooling build on something else, please let me know in the comments below. Have fun and thanks for watching!